Welcome again. I'm Jason Steger here with Dr. Patrick Flynn. Boy. You know, this morning we were having coffee, and uh, we talk about a lot of things when we have coffee, but the topic of cholesterol came up, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I <laughs> ignorantly I said to you, well, good, good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, right? What did yep. you say to me? Uh, actually, there's no such thing as good cholesterol, bad cholesterol. All right. And I said, well, that doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. because at a previous job that I was at, we had some uh, wellness checks that people would come in and they would test your cholesterol. And I sat down and they said, well, there's, here's your good cholesterol and here's your bad cholesterol and here's where you need to have your mm -hmm. levels up. And, and I always thought there was bad cholesterol because like that little kid in the Cheerios commercial <laughs> who comes up at, to his dad at what, yep. like three in the morning and he's like, well, what are you doing? And, and the kid says, I'm just trying to lower your cholesterol, Dad, with yep. a box of Cheerios. Mm -hmm. So why would Cheerios be promoting to lower your cholesterol, or what's what's so negative about it? Right. It's actually probably one of the biggest farces that are out there today. And it's probably a very hot topic because it's also the most sold drug to males. What I actually did is I actually grabbed actually a blood test from one of the patients we take care of, and it actually goes over some of those screens that you were talking about. And I wanted to point out one really kind of funny but kind of truthful thing. You know, like I said, they sit down and they go, here's your, your bad cholesterol, here's your good cholesterol. Now, first of all, they always list your HDL and LDL. Which one's your bad one? I'll take a wild guess and say the LDL. Right, right, and that's what they teach everybody. But it's kind of funny, though, if we look at my nice little chart over here, uh, my nice little explanation. <laughs> but I, actually, I just took the top four things they usually have in a, in a blood test when they do cholesterol. They'll do cholesterol, they'll do triglycerides, and they'll do LDL and HDL. So my question to everybody is this. Well, if this is your bad cholesterol and this is your good cholesterol, What's that then right there? Uh, something's got to be mixed together. Yeah, well, actually, it's kind of funny. It has no relationship whatsoever. This is actually your true cholesterol levels. And actually, LDL and HDL stand for totally different things. Can you okay? just explain the two differences yeah. between the LDL and HDL? Yeah, well, now what happens is, and the funny part is that when we look at HDL and LDL, I love how you ever see the commercials where all of a sudden you'll see, like, they'll show the commercials of, uh, of okay, take this drug, and because if your diet and your family don't match up, then you need these drugs. And it doesn't really matter because you can eat anything you want, it's not gonna, it's not gonna increase your LDL. You can eat anything you want, it's not gonna create your HDL. Because what they don't realize is the fact that you don't get HDL and LDL from food. It comes from your liver. And my question to patients is, well, when does your liver start making bad stuff for you, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. What's my point? My point is the fact that LDL and HDL aren't even actually cholesterols. If you even list out the, the, what it stands for, LDL stands for low-density lipoprotein. Okay. Now think about that. It's not a cholesterol. What is it? Lipoprotein. It's a protein. That's okay. right. HDL is a high-density lipoprotein. So what I did is actually you can go to Google, just Google uh, cholesterol, or actually even Google LDL, okay? And it says it's a protein carrier of cholesterol. So really this is not bad cholesterol. This is not good cholesterol. These are carrier proteins. They have different jobs. Mm -hmm. LDL takes cholesterol from the liver where it's made or, or, or where it's stored, and it delivers it to the tissue for it to be used. Mm -hmm. Now we have to step back because there's the big key. I, and once again, go to actually just Google and Google cholesterol and just go to the encyclopedia, which is just a free encyclopedia on there, and just read the definition of cholesterol. It's a, it's a lipid waxy steroid, and that's pretty interesting, found in cell membranes and transported in the blood, and what it does is essential for cell membranes, membrane permeability, fluidity, hormones, everything. Now think okay. about that. Mm -hmm. So, and the reason why I want to, I know we have a short video, but the one thing I want to talk about is the fact that when you look at a hormones for anybody, male or female, every hormone is made from what? Cholesterol. Cholesterol. So if we start having these low cholesterol diets, these fat-free diets, yeah. guess what happens? Hormone levels in men and women. Uh-oh. Exactly. And that's not good for men either. No, it's very not good for men. <laughs> actually, one of the things that's kind of funny, actually, remember, you know, we're only, you know, early 30s. And uh, what happens is, do you remember when we were, even 20 years ago, how many male enhancement drugs have you seen on TV? Yeah. It just doesn't happen. Because what happens is, when uh, um, cholesterol levels go down, something else doesn't go up. Right. Okay. <laughs> but, that, but the funny part, and if you even look at some of the side effects, and what I did today is I pulled out the side effects from Lipitor.com. So it's not, not really interesting. It's very, it's very interesting when you can actually go to their own website and find out some of the side effects. Headaches, infections, muscle pains, diarrhea, joint pain, inflammation. I love this one. Accidental injury. A side effect is accidental injury. That's a whole nother topic right there. But also, too, hormone depletions, 
skin, uh, skin back pain, allergic reactions, constipation. And if you look, what it's doing is when you take that, quote, cholesterol away from a system, you can't reproduce cells, you can't produce hormones. So all these side effects come about. Now here's the one thing that I found very interesting when you go onto Lipitor.com, and actually it's kind of interesting because if you just go in the side effects portion, do you know, for example, there's contraindications for taking most drugs. Mm -hmm. One thing that people don't know, do you know that if you take any thyroid medication like um, thyroxin, or excuse me, like uh, uh, levothyroxine or synthroid, what happens is there's contraindications. If you have adrenal problems or adrenal weakness, you can't take it. It's a contraindication, you shouldn't take it. How many people do you know out there has been tested for their, their adrenals before they take thyroid medication? Probably not many. Nobody. And, and even they go back to their doctor and go, oh yeah, I guess that's okay. But second of all, what happens is this. One contraindication for taking Lipitor, it says right on their website, risk factors include family history, high blood pressure, age, or low HDL. There's a lot of people that may have low HDL levels, mm -hmm. and I can show you how to balance these back to normal, which right. is a whole other topic. Right. But the idea is this, is the fact if your HDL is low, a contraindication for taking Lipitor is that. Yeah. Okay, and, and that's very scary because if you look at all the risk factors that come about it that way. Now, just go back in the encyclopedia definition, that's what I said, you can just go to Google and, and put in. It says, since cholesterol is essential for life, it is primary synthesized within the body. Now think about that, it's essential for life. We have gotten this falsehood that cholesterol is bad for us. Right. It's one yeah, of the biggest fallacies there is in the planet. And it's, there's so many things that it has to do with our body. Right. And, and it, not only does it mess up females, but also messes up males mentally. Yeah, and the thing that freaks me out is as you're reading through these things with Lipitor, if they're taking Lipitor and then something happens with their hormones, then they're going to go to stuff like the Viagra and Cialis. And That's right. What, what do they talk about there? Yeah. You get lightheaded and blurred vision and yep. all that. I mean, before you know it, you're going to be a, a wreck in yep. the hospital, but you're filled with all this medication. Yep. And really, you're not taking care of anything because right. it's not right. naturally healing. Anymore. And the only reason why we're picking on Lipitor is the fact that it's one, the number one sold drug for males by far. It's actually, yeah. I think it's the number one sold drug in the world. Yeah. But on top of it, the fact that any cholesterol medication, say, well, I take Zocor. Well, guess what? There's really no difference. Yeah. They all perform the same function. They're just sold by a different company. Right. Okay. And what we got to really look at is saying, listen, we have to start understanding the fact that instead of being cholesterol free and lowering your cholesterol levels, you got to get rid of the trans fats, mm -hmm. you know, all the hydrogen hydrogen oils, things like that. That okay. can really throw off your cholesterol levels, but maybe we'll create a video actually and show them actually what those, what actually goes on, why HDL goes low, why LDL goes low. Yeah, because I think it's important for people to understand that they get that type of stuff in under control. Yep. They're back to living a healthier lifestyle. Yep. Men can perform better yep. naturally the way yep. that they should be and not have to rely on these kind of things. Correct. Correct, correct. Yeah. And it's great stuff. But like I said, there's, uh, we'll work on a video for you guys next time. But like I said, if you have any questions, we can definitely go to our website. Yeah, absolutely. Please email us or check the website out at thewellnessway.info. Uh, Cheerios, they taste good. Kids love them. You know, it's not like you eat Cheerios and things are going to go away, right? Mm -hmm. We're yeah, gonna, it, that's right. They'll still be good for you in, in the end. So. Well, that's, that's debatable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And it depends on what kind of sugar you put on there. That's right, right exactly. Another video? That's right, another video. <laughs> okay. Another video on Cheerios. All right. <laughs> for Dr. Patrick Flynn, I'm Jason Steger.